Meanwhile, there was a Friday deadline issued by the Department of Homeland Security for the Texas National Guard to allow uh, U.S. Border Control agents to go into uh, this uh, park. It's and a Eagle Pass. Eagle Pass. <laughs> is, the, is the town. And uh, to go into this uh, uh, park, essentially, and uh, get rid of the razor wire that has been installed in the Rio Grande. It has caused, uh, the park is called Shelby Park. It has caused uh, the death of numerous uh, migrants, um, mostly women and children. And um, the deadline passed. It's unclear what the federal government intends to do. Here is Christy Nome uh, going on about uh, how she's unsure if this is going to uh, lead to uh, the next civil war. Could take action today. Go Governor, I do want to ask you about that in a minute, but just to uh, mm -hmm. put a button on the uh, the letter that you wrote and what is going on with regard to this, to the razor wire. Uh, you said that you could be willing to send South Dakota National Guard troops down to the mm -hmm. border again. We heard from your colleague in Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt, that the situation could lead to a force on force conflict. Congressman Clay Higgins said the feds are staging a civil war. There is real concern that things between Texas and the federal mm -hmm. government could turn violent. Are you worried about that? Well, that's why I went to the border on Friday. Um, I went there to see with my own eyes what was going on and recognizing that that I am, as governor of South Dakota, I'm commander in chief of my National Guard. That's a heavy responsibility that sits on our shoulders. We have the same responsibility for those families and those soldiers that the president should feel, feel for our military and how he engages them. Uh, so we don't know where this will escalate. We don't know what the president will do. We don't know how he'll try to manipulate our soldiers and if he will even defend our country uh, from this invasion that is happening. So that's why I went there. Um, I'm all in to protect our state sovereignty. I deal every day, Dana, in South Dakota with the effects of this open border. We have those Mexican cartels that have a presence on my nine tribal reservations where those communities are suffering from the drug trafficking and the human trafficking that's going through my tribal reservations where I don't have any jurisdiction. Uh, I can't go there and help bring peace that to their community. I can't help protect them from these so, Mexican cartels. So are you um, I mean, this is the uh, uh, what the right is doing. And every time uh, Joe Biden gets out there and says, I need um, authority to close down the border, he is essentially providing more fuel and oxygen for the we are being invaded talking point. It is um, the the messaging on this, the policy positions on this is just bizarre. It's absolutely bizarre. Meanwhile, um, we have a, a new trucker convoy that is assembled in this country that is apparently going to uh, heading to the border as we speak. It is uh, known as the Take Our Border Back convoy. Um, they've called themselves God's Army. Okay, not, not well, God's convoy. That, that would have been better. This is a biblical monumental moment that's been put together by God, one convoy organizer said on a recent planning call. We are besieged on all sides. Was that one convoy organizer God or <laughs> no? Speaking for God. We're besieged on all sides by dark forces of evil. A am I being too uh, knee-jerk to assume this person has a southern accent? Uh, no. Um, I mean, would people feel better if I did it in a Massachusetts accent instead of like a Southern one? Blessed are the peacemakers, <laughs> for they shall be called the sons of God. It's time for the remnant to rise. Um, <laughs> Ruth Brunstein, this is from uh, uh, this Vice piece. Assistant Professor of Sociology at the University of Connecticut, author of Prophets, Patriots, and Faith and Democracy Across the Political Divide, says when people believe that they're working on behalf of God, they might be willing to resort to relatively extreme measures. Yeah. Oh, interesting observation. Yep. <laughs> 
The organizers' current plan is for the convoy to depart Virginia Beach on uh, Monday, today. Okay. Snake Virginia down accent. through the southeast, stopping over in Jacksonville, Florida, before making its way several stops along the border. The convoy will then split up for separate rallies on February 3rd. One near Eagle Pass, Texas, a second in Yuma, Arizona, and a third in San Isidro, California. Uh, a group of six Patriot World influencers, I don't know what that means, including yeah. Kim Yader, who Not runs a self-empowerment, those. self-help group, oh and an God. anti-voter fraud go- group. And they're all these the same people. It's amazing. Started organizing the convoy a month ago. God's army is rising up, she said on a planning call. We have all been chosen for this Where's time. Tim Pool on this? Hmm. Yeah, Tim Pool is going to be riding out in front. They're going to strap him to the grill of one of these cars, these yeah, trucks. We've, we've been sleeping on the influencers, I guess. I've never heard of Kim Yeeter. Nope. The convoy's crowdfunder on Give, Send, Go has raked in more than $30,000 this week, totaling nearly 50000 by last Friday morning. Once willing to, de- quote, once willing to die defending this country, now willing to de- die protecting my family from this armor of God. Wait, no, 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 I'm sorry. Now willing to die protecting my family from uh, what this country has become said one donor yeah. who identified himself as a Navy vet, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, wrote another. Hmm? <laughs> uh, apparently Alex Give Jones... Give Send Go you- sounds like it's, um, it's like one of those like, it's like a Venmo clone made by the people who make those uh, websites you use to download videos from Twitter. <laughs> exactly. D. Chambers, a former military commander who says he was a Green Beret. Uh, there's a war literally happening for America now. He was on um, it wasn't Alex, Alex Jones? Jones saying that. Oh, that was Alex Jones, right? Not him. That was, uh, um, oh yeah, Jones said that, right? Jones said that, right. Chambers said, we're at 1774 right now. He later uh, drew a comparison with the biblical story of Gideon's army That's in the book of earlier. Judges. The army's faith in God allowed them to prevail over their enemy despite being vastly outnumbered. They're like, who is it that they're going to fight? <laughs> Amazing. The, uh, we're, uh, this country's insane. I don't know what to tell you. Folks. It's just like, it's crazy. Call from I hope a there's somebody embedded with the camera, though. I want to see how that uh, yes. progresses. 